That thing you did a long time ago, that diet, that workout plan, that whatever, that worked. You know, the one that made you lose weight and feel amazing, but then you gained the weight back or whatever. Now you're looking back and saying, I'm going to do that again because it worked. No, it probably won't. What you did before that worked for you before isn't guaranteed to work again. Things change, you get older, your lifestyle changes, context changes. There's lots of things that change. So what you did before might've worked before, but it doesn't mean it's going to work again. You're a different person now. Look at it that way. Old rules what, don't apply. What made you think of that? Well, how many times did you get a client who says, God, this is the thing I did. I did this one thing. Yeah, I lost weight or, you know, before I just cut my carbs and yeah. totally worked for me, or I followed this one workout yeah. and it was really great and it was awesome. And, you know, it all worked for me. You just ran a lot more. Yeah. Place. And I look at them and I go, oh, you know, when did you do that? <laughs> well, you know, it was 15 years ago. Did you have kids? 15? No, I didn't have kids. What was your job like? Well, it, you know, it didn't work like I do now. Or, or yeah, I'm 45 now. When I did that, I was 25 or whatever. And I, and I get it, by the way. I understand this. When you have success with something and then later on you have that problem again, you look back and go, well, it worked for me then. Why can't it work for me now? But everything changes, especially and including the context of your life. Not to mention just your age. A lot of things change as you get older and your lifestyle changes. And what you might have done before might either be too much, not enough, or just inappropriate. And uh, people tend to get attached to that one thing that worked once so much so. I don't know if you guys ever experienced this, that people will continue to try it over and over again because yeah. it worked that one time. Yeah, and I feel like, too, you could kind of lump in some of these crash diets into that yeah. uh, equation just because there's pictures of when they would portray themselves as, oh, I, I look the best here. And I, and it's like this, this weird, like, I guess, um, dissonant kind of cognitive dissonance that they have in terms of like what, what was actually happening versus like how they really felt when they're going yeah. through that process. Like sometimes they just like conveniently forget that part of it and just look at like what they'd like to see themselves. Look do you like. think that has more to do with where their bodies are currently at right now or that they saw results 15, 20 years ago, despite or in spite of the, the actual bad choice it was like to do Both. it that way. Like meaning, you know, for example, like you definitely have heard this, like, well, I just would just, I would cut out all the alcohol and start running every day for yeah. five miles. And I would get in two weeks, I'd be in great but shape. But it's not working now. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. And What's then, going and, on? And now it doesn't work anymore. And it's like, well, you know, that, that, that wasn't a good strategy even 15 years ago. It's, yeah, and it yeah. definitely isn't a good strategy now. So do you think it has more to do with that? Or do you think there's seriously something going on with their, their lives and their age and their hormones? And also how about this during those 15 years, how many times did they gain, lose, gain, lose, gain, lose, and add fat cells to mm -hmm. their body? Yeah. Right. I mean, so all of those things, I mean, look, look yeah. let me ask you guys this. I, I know how, I already know the answer, but I'll ask you guys this. When you guys were 23, could you go out with your friends, <laughs> drink, stay out till 2, 3 a.m., wake up at 7 a.m. the next day, go to work, train clients, work out, and be like, okay? Yeah. What happens if you do that now? Oh. <laughs> it's like dead man walking. Oh, yeah, I, just, dead. I mean, there, there was a time in my life where I just had to look at a treadmill and I could lose weight. I, 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 saying, that's I mean, not true anymore. I it's, it's, I can't, I've tried it. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes, use it yeah, sometimes I'll go and I'll just stare at it for like 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, does, yeah. doesn't work like that, you know? So. Yeah. It's changed well, I mean, bit. there's a lot of, look, my, I used to say this all the time, uh, as a, I remember too, having, cause I was a young general manager, right? So when I was managing gyms, I was 19, 20. So I had a lot of staff members that were in their late twenties, some in their thirties, especially the other management team would be in their mid thirties and then older managers were in their forties. Right. And I, and I would say things like, um, I'll sleep when I'm dead or whatever. Yeah. And they'd say, Oh, well, you're going to change your tune when you get older. And I, I did not believe it. Yeah. I did not believe it when I was that age. I yeah, like, I, no, you said I they were weak. Yeah, whatever, yeah. dude. Yeah. I just go. Yeah. You know what I mean? I could just do this, right? And then, of course, as you get older. You're weak and you let yourself go. Yeah, you look back, you're yeah. like, wow, it was true. <laughs> there's there's uh, definitely there's definitely a big difference. And and this is that's just it. There's like a lot of things that change. Look, okay, to give you an example, when scientists are doing studies, they have to do really good controls. Okay. What that means is, is if you're if you're if you're testing two groups of people on a drug or a method or anything, the more you can control everything else 
and make it identical, the more accurate the study is going to be. Mm -hmm. Because if group A has terrible sleep and group B has great sleep, then maybe the intervention wasn't what made them feel better or caused the fat loss or whatever. The sleep played a role. So we can't possibly know. This is why twin studies are so are so valuable because you can, at least you can control the genetics, right? But then there's still lifestyle. Yeah. That's why the, like the gold standard for factors. studies is like, let's lock these people in the lab and watch them and give them what to eat and give them what to drink and, you know, control as much as we can. So it's like, you know, uh, you know, as you get older or you handle more stress in your life, like, okay, well, you didn't have a mortgage. You didn't have two kids. You didn't, you know, go through a divorce or losing a job or whatever. Um, it's just, it's just different now. It, yeah. This, you know, this really hits me as I've gotten older and I've been consistent this entire time with my workouts and stuff, but you know, my hard head will look back and be like, well, I used to be able to do that much volume. Yeah. I used to go that intense with my workout. This can't be too much volume. I have the symptoms of doing too much, but this, this was never too much for me. And then I remind myself like, well, yeah, that was, I don't know, 20 years ago. Like, you know, my body's responding a little differently now. So, um, yeah, it's not the same. I'm not the same person. Well, my first thought, you know, getting somebody like this that has been out of training or nutrition for, you know, years and they're trying to get back into it and they have this perception yeah. of what they used to do is to test and, and really get an accurate account of like where they're at right now. And like, now that we have this, uh, at our disposal and we can just get like, um, testing in terms of, uh, what you're deficient in nutrient wise, yeah. like your hormones, like just so you can account for, you know, what you're working with right now. Cause it is going to be so much different than yeah. who you were like 10 years ago or whatever. I mean, I've shared this before. That was like one of the recommendations. I remember when I first met Katrina that, you know, she would not only did her mom say this to all her kids, but anyone I ever heard her talk about health was like, she'd always recommend that you go get your blood work and everything done when you're young, when you're yeah. early, like in your late twenties, or early thirties. So you're like ideal profile. Yeah. yeah. So you have an idea Comparing. when, cause a lot of us don't do that. Right. What do we tend to do? We wait to go see the mechanic till something's broken. Right. Yeah. You know, we wait to go see the doctor after we see symptoms or like the, the bad stuff versus, Hey, you know what? I feel really good and vibrant young right now. Let's go see where yeah. all my levels are at. So I kind of know where homeostasis is for me. You know, speaking of that, uh, how has your journey been on uh, the less testosterone or no terrible. testosterone? <laughs> terrible. How long did you last? Yeah, uh, you know, like four weeks or so. Yeah. And so I went off and did the pro and doing the protocol to get my body's testosterone to kick up. And there's going to be a lag where, you know, before everything else kicks in, you're going to experience kind of low testosterone. And it sucks. It sucks, man. My... My libido, I could tell, obviously, you know, went way down and just less drive. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Where you just kind of like, Whoa, you know, it just didn't feel the same. Mm -hmm. um, it just didn't feel good. I felt bad. So, yeah, I failed. So I went back on testosterone. <laughs> and I may attempt this again in the future. Um, I'm glad I did it because it helps me connect to, um, you know, when men call in or whatever and they have some of these symptoms. But it's it didn't it doesn't feel good. It was right around week three where I could tell like oh I'm something's different. That's like about what it takes. working out. Say what? That's about what it takes. What the felt, yeah. yeah, the first two weeks it's still in your system, right? You're still at especially when you're running at high levels like you were running. It takes a good solid two weeks before that completely comes it gets down. Out of your and, system. It, and week three was about when I really started. I was going through the motions in my workout, I've, and I've, which I've done before in the past. If I've gone through something stressful or whatever, where I'm just. I'm doing the motion, but I'm like, it's not, I don't feel it. Like, Oh, I remember how much I sucks. lost the drive to even work out. Like, uh, I lost my love for it. Like, I mean, I love to work out. I mean, we all do. It's half yeah. of why we've, we have a passion in the field, right? Is we, we truly enjoy the process of, of lifting weights. And I remember for the first time in my life, I lost that. Like, I was just like, I don't like this and I'm not enjoying mm -hmm. it. And it's not, and so it did help me connect and relate to so many clients who have expressed that before. Yep. Like, and no. I did it for such a short time. I, I get, I 100% did not feel the full effects. I would have to have gone another month or two, but I felt where I already was. And I was like, why am I doing this? Like, this isn't like, I'm not trying to be off uh, yeah. forever. I've already, you know, accepted this is going to be something I'm going to be taking for, you know, for the rest of my life. Did you find yourself drawn to more lifetime original content? No. Yeah. No, get, you <laughs> know what? It's funny. I, it's not that I got more emotional or anything like that. It just made me, I don't know how to explain it. Blah. You know, yeah. you just kind of lose your I drive. think that of all the things that I noticed the most was the drive. 
I the drive to just to get up and do stuff. I didn't want to uh, home. I didn't want to move and do anything when I go to the gym. I like I didn't want to work out. Like it was that of all the things that I noticed. Yeah, I noticed that the yeah. most. You know, my libido was a little bit affected, um, but it wasn't like that wasn't tr- that wasn't dramatic. Not like not like the drive side. And I guess. Yeah. Maybe people. Oh, I noticed my libido was like, <laughs> like crashed. Oh, did it really yeah, that bad? Yeah. yeah. I mean, mine was mine did, but not horrific. Like it wasn't where I, you know, didn't want to have sex at least once or twice a week. Right. Or, so I mean, that's not horrific, yeah. right? But uh, the big thing was the drive. Was the the drive to to want to get shit done to, you know, and maybe maybe if you are that kind of type A personality, you you recognize that extreme. Probably feel a bit more, yeah. Yeah, that spectrum, that. the other end of the spectrum, even yeah. more because you're on the probably the further end of totally. that spectrum too. You know, but ba- you know, back to the you know original topic. Um, you know, just focusing on the age part is an important one because, you know, as trainers, this was always a touchy one for us because a lot of times people place things that are not associated with getting older. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, you know, they place symptoms on their age when they don't have to do, it has nothing to do with their age. It has to do with their lifestyle. So like, oh, it's because I'm getting older. And it's like, well, no, it's because you eat crappy. You don't, you get bad sleep. You're not exercising yeah. you're properly. Super sedentary. But, but on the other end of that is there are real things that happen as you age. So it's not like nothing happens. Yeah. There's definitely things that happen as you age. A lot of it has to do with, and we kind of talked about this, is that you got results when you were younger in spite of the shitty workout programming, the Mm -hmm. improper diet, and the lack of sleep. And so now that you're still doing those things, you just can't get away with them like you used to. Right. So for someone who's, you know, uh, as you get older, you you, got to use your wisdom. And so what that means is you got to pay attention to other things. You got to pay attention to not just... Your workout program has to be appropriate. Here's the deal. When you get older, you can't have extra fluff in your workout. All that's going to do. Everything is, has to be intentional. Correct. You're, if you're if there's extra stuff in your workout, you're not getting any benefit from it. All you're doing is compromising your recovery, which you probably already have slightly compromised because a, a 45-year-old's lifestyle is oftentimes way more responsibilities, more way more stresses than when you were 25 or even 30, right? So you probably have kids, you probably have a mortgage, you got a job. So um, you, you, so th- there's more life stresses. And then as you get older, your body's gonna recover a little, it's gonna take a little more time to recover and that kind of stuff. So really a lot of it has to do with, you can't get away with what you did before. So a really smart <laughs> way to approach it is look at your workout, no fluff. Let's make this as effective and as appropriate as possible. Let's look at training my body around potential movement pattern issues I've developed because you've just been on earth longer. So you probably have some aches and pains that are the result of you moving a particular way for 20 years or whatever. You got to focus on that. And then you got to look at the rest of your life. You got to look at the lifestyle stuff. So like a 20 year old, you know, I'll talk to them about that kind of stuff as well, but somebody's 45, 55, 65. It's the harder sell. Yeah. We're looking at all the other stuff as well. And then when you do that, here's what happens, okay? Because now I'm gonna now I'm gonna flip the script here, and just now that I've crapped everybody out who's over forty, <laughs> um, I used to get this all the time. I would get clients who, when they would get on board, would figure this out, take a little while, but then we would do things right. They'd say to me, "I feel better now than I did in my twenties. I'm in the best shape of my life." And I used to get that all the time from people who were well. Is there a way group. that you have either found to reframe? that process for either yourself or for your clients. I feel like that's what I had to do was to, to make that connection because it, it there's a like instantly you think, Oh man, this sucks. I used to be able to just do this and I would get yeah. these results where now I have to focus on my sleep. I do this cold plunge yeah. thing. Now I have to take these walks. I have to do these positive affirmations. I have to do, mm-hmm. to do all these things to get these kind of results. The, the reframing for me has become connecting the dots, just like we try and do with exercise with clients to all these other behaviors in your life that you need to focus on in order to see the same kind of results as you saw or better results than you saw in your twenties as they have carryovers into other aspects of life. Yes, totally. So it's like, maybe my main goal is to just lose 20 pounds of body fat or say build five pounds of muscle. And you know, your point that you're making right now is there's other things that we need to address. Say sleep is a a, a obvious example, Mm -hmm. but it's not like, addressing sleep only really benefits 
my body fat loss and our body composition goal. Uh, what's cool is that, oh, wow, that might've been the driver of why I started to focus on it. But, oh, wow, now that I notice I'm getting better sleep, I'm more productive at work. Yes. I'm a better husband. Yes. I'm a better father. Like, I feel better in the morning time. Now I'm not this angry morning person anymore. Like, you know, so reframing all these things now that I, that I'm older, that I have to focus on to get the same kind of results that I did when I was younger, that's okay because I'm starting to realize that, oh, all these other things that I do in order to get those kind of results have so much carryover into other aspects of my life. 100%. It's not just about the the aesthetics. Now, once you start implementing and looking at those other things, everything else gets a lot better. Everything else gets a lot better. Um, but yeah, it's like, you know, you, you don't, what do they say? Youth is wasted on the, on the young. Um, you just got away with a lot is really what it was. I mean, I look back at my life and how I worked and how I slept and the supplements I took and how I worked mm -hmm. out and all that stuff. And, uh, I got away with it. It wasn't none of it. Was, it wasn't ideal <laughs> yeah. at all. Well, you didn't really know your limitations. You didn't really, you know, it, I guess it's it's a bit of an experiment when you're younger. You're just really kind of putting all of those, you're, you're testing all of those factors. And that's the advantage you have when you're older is you you know how your body's going to respond a lot of times to, you know, certain things. And, and to be able to take a little bit more of the ego out of it, especially, you know, as, as you, I was younger, you know, I wanted to press it and I all constantly like throttle and I would always go over. Now, here's the deal. Okay, I'll say this as a, as a as a obviously as a trainer. You give me a 25 year old or you give me a 45 year old, and they're both like yeah, pretty serious about you know working out, whatever, getting fit. Uh, I'm it's easier to get the 45 year old to to apply a lot of other things. A 25 year old oh, is going to be like. The buy in. You ever the, work with a 25 year old yeah, kid? Yeah, trying to laugh at you. Well, and that goes back to the original point <laughs> of you get to uh, you get to see these results at 25 in spite of your good training diet and all those things like yeah, that. Yeah, Whereas yeah. with the 45 year old, it requires all the things. But then the They're positive, wiser. The positive side to that yeah. is the 40 plus year old that you get to change some of those behaviors. They see huge differences. I mean, it was. I mean, even like testosterone testosterone, like taking testosterone for me at 40 something years old versus what I took in doses in my mid twenties oh, yeah. Yeah. is like, like I remember in my mid twenties, I'm like, I think I feel it. I think, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I kind of feel it. It's like, Oh no, there is no. And by the way, two to three times the dose yeah. that I take now at 40 years old, which is like tiny compared to that dose. But yet I feel it way. It makes a way bigger difference yeah. in my life today than it did when I was 25 and already probably had high enough testosterone as it yeah. is. I feel the same thing goes when you are yeah. taking a, you know, 40 plus year old client and you're getting them to follow some of these things and change some of these behaviors they change it. Where a 25 year old, you tell them like, oh, prioritize your sleep and do this sure. and that. And then you ask them, how did you feel? They say, huh? Yeah. The yeah. same, I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, really? You only got two hours of sleep the three days before that. Like, now you felt the same after eight hours? Yeah. I there's mean, a lack of aware. There's a there lack is. of that kind of awareness. I remember yeah. having that. There's a lack of awareness. There's resiliency and youth that they have on their side. There's a lot of things that are, that are going in that direction. Yeah. I feel like where. 40 plus, uh, you, you feel the, the needle get moved when you, when you, you can, but look, I tell you what, there's a lot of world records set by people in those age groups in, in terms of strength, your body never loses the ability to adapt. So you can always build muscle. You can always burn body fat. Mm -hmm. You just have to apply it all the right way. I don't, am, am I allowed to even talk about this new program that I've been, that are we allowed to talk about you it? Can, yet, you can let people know it's coming. It's coming. So I can let them know. Cause I was trying to get your attention earlier. You were busy doing something. So. Uh, we have something coming out for people uh, like this who are over 40 specifically. Yeah. And it's the, only, I think it's the only program that includes- Lifestyle. Not just workout yeah. and, you know, the obvious stuff. Obviously, you get your workout, everything planned yeah. out with the considerations of somebody who's over 40, but you also get more uh, lifestyle stuff. Well, I think, We've noticed that makes a big difference. I mean- in my opinion, it's the most important part of the thought that went into writing this because there's not a lot of different exercises that I'm going to do with somebody at 40 than I would at, say, 25 or 30 years old. Maybe I have to take some things into consideration, yes, right, mm -hmm. because yes. of joint health and right. wear and tear and things like that. So there are some considerations, and obviously we built those into the program. But the biggest thing that I think is focused on with my clients that were, you know, 40 plus 
was the attention to the lifestyle to the point we're yeah. making right now. I mean, those are things all we have, the daily habits that we, you could peer into. And we've that, never touched any of yeah. those in any of our programs where yeah. we've actually yeah. written. This is out. stuff we ask every single session Correct. beforehand. Yeah, yeah we're I mean, trying to get data points. And this just makes it easier for them to self-assess and, and go through that process. I yeah. mean, if you've listened to the podcast for long enough, you've heard all this advice. This is just the first time that it's we've programmed. programmed. Yeah. Like, okay, we've programmed. how would you teach? So if we were to take a client who agrees, like, okay, nodding their head. Yeah, I, I, I want to start some of those things. Oh, yeah, I need to do that. Okay, yeah, well, yeah. How, do I, how do I get a client to start to adhere to those things? Well, this is- Here's what it looks like. Yeah, here's what it looks oh, like. Oh, yeah. So. Oh, good. It's so, going to be exciting. No, I'm well, just- I'm, well, It's actually, uh, it's been a while, too, since I've decided that I was going to actually follow one of the programs where this is like perfect timing for kind of where I'm at in, in my training diet and stuff like that. Today's YouTube program giveaway is MAPS Anabolic Advanced. Here's how you can win that program. Leave us a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Uh, also, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If we pick you as the winner, we'll let you know in the comments section. Uh, also, we have a sale going on this month. MAPS, old time strength, half off. And MAPS, obstacle course racing, OCR. That's also half off. If you're interested in either one, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Speaking of which, I know we can't really talk, give too much detail, but uh, uh, how was your guys' experience in Mexico? We Now, we did some, we'll be able to talk about this later, but we did yeah. some, some treatments and stuff out there that we'll talk about later. But how was your experience so far? Any? Oh, it was so far so good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Everything's going well. Right. I mean, I, I particularly enjoyed the place we stayed and uh, you know, a little bit of a nice little getaway for a bit Yeah, yeah. on I, top I, of it all. I'm doing my best to hold back my excitement. You know that I'm probably the most skeptical. Um, I, I'm like, yeah. I just well, you have the most visible. Like, yeah. And I, you I know, mean, we could talk specifically issue. about what you want out of it. right? Yeah. So the, 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 what, what sold us on going down there? I mean, all of us, uh, I actually started with me, right? So it was my conversation, uh, with Dr. Khan and, and telling, uh, t stressing to him about everything that I've done to try and put my psoriasis in remission and nothing has worked as far as in, in putting it into remission. We've done things. I've done a lot of things like the red light therapy and vitamin D and there's a lot of stuff that and I've done. they all do something. Oh yeah. They all, they all <laughs> help it. Right. They've all Caldera helps it from the getting dry and itchy. Like, so I've used a lot of the products and the things that we've worked with and they've all, had positive things towards it, but nothing has put it in remission. It's still it's been, been something that I've just accepted for 20 years of my mm -hmm. life now that, oh, I might, I might just have this. And of course, I have addressed diet, right? Because that's the, it's an autoimmune. So mm -hmm. let me see what foods I get rid of. I've done the food sensitivity test with Cabral. I eliminated some of the things that were on there for 60 days. Thought that really didn't do much. Yes, it helped, so, like helped again with it, like it, but it didn't put it in remission. Where when I talk to him, he's like, "Oh, we can put this." He's in like, "You do this, this, and this," which we'll talk about later. We can't yeah. get into details yet, but he's like, he was confident. Like he was so confident that I remember, like Katrina was like, "Are you excited?" And I'm like, "No," and she's like, "How could you not be excited?" And I'm like, "Because I don't, I don't want to get so sold on that we're going to be able to put this thing in a remission." Because, and then you'd be disappointed. Yeah, and then maybe disappointed, and like you know, I get a little bit of results from it, and I'm like, "Oh, cool. Well, that's great, but it's not remission. It's a different. That's different, right?" where he looked at me again after I told him, you know, like, you know, I, I'm just hoping that this makes it a little bit better and stuff like that. And he's like, no, we're going to solve it. And I'm like, who says that? Yeah. yeah. I was like, don't confident. get me excited like that. Dr. <laughs> I know, I know, bro. He's like, oh yeah. He's like, it's, it's not a matter if it's a matter, you know, you, depending on how bad it is, you might need how many treatments? Yeah, a couple treatments. He goes, but oh yeah, we'll, we'll get to the bottom of this. That's we'll, crazy. We will solve it. And I'm like, if that happens. Yeah, so, so I'm, this is a double edged sword for the for because like I said, we can't get into too much detail. But <laughs> if it works, like, oh, you guys it's gonna be amazing. If it doesn't work, yeah. We're what I what it. I will share <laughs> is um, it's I'm I'm getting excited and I'm try and I'm having to hold it back. And the reason why I am is because even in the in the forty eight hour period that it's been, I'm already seeing positive signs in the right direction. Yeah. Things from uh, not it's not itching at all. I see it already starting to dissipate. Like. So there's a lot of really positive things that are happening right now that I like just I'm trying to reserve like the excitement around like, okay, let's see what, you know, talk to me in a few weeks and see where we're at. And I know he did say it should take about eight to 10 days for it to fully circulate and be able to see, like really see and feel the benefits. So we're not even there yet. We're not even at the eight to 10 day mark where we're supposed to really 
feel and see the benefits. But and, soon we'll be able to talk. Now everybody's like, what'd you guys do? What the hell yeah. happened? We'll yeah. talk about it. We'll, we'll, talk, we'll get to it. Yeah, right now yeah. it's a big secret. So, But yeah. I tell you what, I, the uh, place we stayed was, first time I'd ever stayed there before, that was a treat and a half. Gorgeous. I had such a, you know, it's so cool too to, uh, I, I don't know, I, I don't know about you guys, but like when I experience like, over the top, really good customer service stuff. It mm -hmm. always makes me curious to like the operation. Like, oh, yeah. you know, who's running the business this? Business mind behind it. Yeah. yeah. I just, totally. it, I, Disneyland is like this, you know, as much as we all shit on Disney, right? But, but the actual parks are like this. You get that experience, right? They've built a culture yeah. around yeah. serving people. Yeah. Um, I feel like the Ritz has done that with the, the hotel. Like, I think that. What was that stat you said about the Ritz? It was crazy that each. Person. So they have a so they have a rule right. There's this there's this. Uh, this started, is legit. This is for real. Yeah, it's called the two thousand dollar rule. <clears throat> and so the idea behind the two thousand dollar rule. This is a rule that they've they've embodied for I think a very long time with the Ritz. And the idea is that uh, no employee um, has to get approval to spend two thousand dollars in order to solve a customer problem. Imagine empowering yeah. every employee like that. Yeah. I that's just think, crazy. Yeah, I just think that's so cool that, you know, that that's how much emphasis they put on taking care of the customer. Next time I go right. to Ritz, I'm going to be like, I lost, <laughs> yeah. I lost, I lost $1,500. Yeah. yeah. I don't think yeah. I fixed that for me. Yeah. So, I, I mean, <laughs> I this inspired me to buy the, to buy the book. I just started reading the book. And so I'm sure I'll get into more. I'll have more stuff to share about exactly how that works and like what, you know, if there's any sort of rules. The way I understood it from what I've read so far is just like, if there's an issue or a problem that is under that dollar amount that say a customer has that they'll just, they have the ability to spend that money to solve that problem. So I think that's like, for example, I can imagine that uh, you have, uh, there's been a time where a TV's broken or down and you call the front desk. What the hell? My TV's down. Like, yeah. it's not like they have to go, Oh, hold on. It's, no, it's Friday night. Yeah. We don't meet with our manager until Monday. Let me see what happens. Like they could probably go run down and buy a TV, have it replaced that day sure. up on your wall, you know, right away and pay someone to do it. Cause you could get that done under $2,000 and not need approval for it and not get a slap on the wrist because there's these, some of these brands just have such a long mm -hmm. uh, pedigree and heritage, like just history and culture. Did I ever tell you guys when I tried you, to haggle at Tiffany? Did I ever tell you guys about this? You tried to haggle at Tiffany? <laughs> I swear to God I did. <laughs> That's funny. Because I was a young, stupid kid I'm and I embarrassed I myself yeah, in front yeah, of everybody in Tiffany. Because you I, thought you were like a closer and a salesman. So you oh, you, bro. Yeah. I did. I was Here's like, what we're going to no, do. No, listen, listen. <laughs> yeah. Here's gets, what you're going to do. <laughs> hey, hey, it's worse than that. It's worse than, it's than, you worse this, than that. Dude. You're going to give me that. It's hey. worse, bro. I was a kid, okay? So please forgive me. But I literally you know, looked at the you know the product. I looked at it. I said, okay, I'll take this one. And, you know, it's got a, it's got the price on it, right? And I said, but I want to pay that. <laughs> These are my words, bro. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. I said, but I'll pay this out the door. Yeah. And the guy looked at me like, what? Out the door. What do you, yeah. what do you mean out the door? <laughs> yeah. You know, like that's the final price. Like yeah. you take the tax part. You guys take care of that. I'll pay that out the door. And he goes, and there's like people around me, like right. shopping for like $80,000 watches and shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I know they're all looking at me like, this, this is kid, right? And he looks at me, yeah. he goes, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. We don't, we don't do that, do that here. I said, well, I mean. I mean, like I said, I'll buy it if you give to the, you know, give it to me for this for, you know, out the door. And he goes, I'm really, he's really nice to me. He's like, I really apologize, but we don't even run sales. He's like, that's just not how we operate. Yeah. I said, yeah. Okay. I said, then, you know, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to go somewhere else. And I walked out very slowly because I was waiting for, I was like walking, like waiting for him to be like, okay, sir, come back. He didn't say shit, man. I walked out. I left. So I literally sat on a bench for 30 minutes. He's like, don't worry, he's gonna call me. Hey, listen, no. I sat for 30 minutes. He wants my business. Because I knew I had to go back in. I'm like, oh fuck, I gotta go back inside. <laughs> and I did. I went back inside. You know, it, it's out the door, bro. I said that at Tiffany's. I mean, oh, since you brought this man. up, it, it, yeah, I've, I've been thinking about it since I've been reading the book and so that just kind of speculating, right, on what the future holds for for brands and stuff like that. And historically, obviously, brands like that have survived and done really yeah. well. I think they're going to thrive in the direction that we're going. It's which is ironic because we have talked before about we're moving into this this future of anything and everything you want will be free and that you're going to be able to 3D print stuff. And it's like, okay, well, what about some of these brands that are so expensive that are they gonna have to come down in price? And I'm like, you know what? I think they did such a good job of delivering this personal customer service type of experience yeah, yeah. that that those are gonna be the two ends of the spectrum. You know, either be you spend ridiculous money because you've got it to burn and spend it and you value that type of experience, yep. or you'll spend next to nothing because you can get it printed or nothing or cheap or share it with somebody else or like, you know, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever that may be. So I think it's, we're just going to see 
these massive gaps where a lot of the in the middle stuff is going to die off. You're going to have to either compete with the super inexpensive yep. model, yep. or you're going to have to compete with the over the top expensive model. But I think it still survives. I think yeah. it survives and thrives in the future. It just we're going to we're all the stuff in the middle. You're right. It's funny, dude. I've I've always respected brands that don't do sales the most. Yeah, those are always the ones, and it it sucks because I always want like I said, but then they never have it, and those are always the products like I gravitate to because it's like you know what you're going to get. Like they're not. They're like our product speaks for itself, and that really is like a statement to the the quality and the value of it for the most part. So it's like that. I think that's always going to stick around because people know it's like this is this has always been this way. They've built a track record for that. It's like you can make up your own shit version of it, or you could go like or you could you know gamble for something Have else. You guys, you guys ever watched the videos on? Um, there's like clips. There's a lot of clips of people. What are those airline? What's that airline called? People pay like nothing for a ticket. Spirit, like Spirit, Spirit. Have you seen some of the videos? Oh my god, a Spirit airline. <laughs> my like friend shit? took yeah. a Spirit airline. Yeah. Not oh my ago. god, bro! Uh, some of the he shit ended on up there. in like a totally different uh, <laughs> airport. Airport, <laughs> like the wrong place. Yeah, they had to just. <laughs> I don't know why. Pilots but, like the GPS like, broke on the. See, way. I'm in Vegas. <laughs> I'm like, what are you in Vegas? You're supposed to be in Reno. Like, what happened? Well, I saw a video where this guy's <laughs> this guy's sitting in there. This. Woman's just clipping her toenails. Oh my gosh. <laughs> on the air, on the air yeah, right next to him. <laughs> oh my God. And, and the, the video says, like, only on Spirit Airline. Like, and I guess they just accept it because they paid yeah. 20 bucks for their ticket. So, like, well, you know, I'm going to be on this. Yeah, I do. I think like that that's what we're going to see, though, right? Bus. Do you agree? Like, we're going to see this kind of like extreme, these two extremes. It's going to be the super cheap. People just don't give a fuck. I want the cheapest thing possible. Yeah. And, and we have such a competitive market now, I can get it. Or the people are like, I don't care what the price is. I want that kind of service, and I'm willing to pay way more than what's reasonable. There's some things that I don't care about enough to care about paying for good service. Can't think of anything off the top of my head, but I know that I know this about myself. But some things, I'll pay a lot. I can name a bunch for of things for you like that. You're like, like that with watches, with shoes, with clothes, with cars. You're that way. Yeah, with I that. guess you're right. Well, <laughs> there's a lot of things you don't really care that yeah, much yeah, about yeah, when yeah, it comes to that. I guess you're right. Yeah, yeah. But it, with service, well, you're right with service. But one thing that I'll pay a lot for, uh, or the things that I will pay a lot for, are things that I don't like anyway. So you add bad shit on top of it. Like, like I hate mm -hmm. flying. Anyway, you love I cabanas. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, yeah, I don't. <laughs> and I don't, where we go? Yeah, cabana. I don't like flying, and I don't like when I go to a pool or whatever, and I got to go hunt for a freaking chair and get oh get four chairs together because I got my kids with me or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> like I hate that, and I hate it's convenience. I hate traveling. I hate flying so much because I just don't like being in planes. I don't like the whole deal. So I'm willing to pay for the extra on the plane because you add the fact that I hate flying. Then on top of it, I have to sit on this tiny chair. Then on top of it, I have to line up, make sure I fight for the right thing, like they do with Southwest or whatever. It's like I, oh, that yeah. for me. I'll I, pay for I it. think it's so funny when people judge other people with like how they spend money. I know. Who cares? Yeah. Who yeah. cares? It's like who yeah. cares? Like if the, you've I, obviously made that judgment yourself, and the, and you're comfortable. You know with what you value. Like, yeah. Yeah. Dude. yeah. I mean, to me, that's so that's your... that's the thing I try and check myself with always, because the only thing that I think in, in, people can get caught up in is paying for things for other people, not even themselves, mm -hmm. right? Like buying the name brand car, not because they really value or love the car, but more so, so it's a, it's a, a signal yeah. to the rest of the world. That's like, just a bad relationship with money. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and I've, and I've, I've an talked about having that. I know I had that. Like I absolutely had that in my 20s. Right. So, and that's, that's my filter now, right? Mm -hmm. Like anytime I make a, a, a purchase, you ask some, yourself that? I ask myself that, is this for me or do I feel the need to go show it off or show people? And if I don't care about showing it off or showing people and it's just for me, then it then truly you know, is for me. That's a good, that's a very good limit. And, and, and that's like, how would I, I care if nobody knew that I had, that's this. right. Mm -hmm. And, and, oh, that's good. and do I feel really good and enjoy it? And it's like, and, and I know that when I, when I don't have this, like, Oh, I need to show it or I need to like tell somebody it's like, yeah. Oh, okay, this is for me, right? And so, and to, to me, it's a really easy way to to measure that. And then, at that case, then who gives a fuck if it's only for me and I don't have the need to go who show? Cares? Then who cares? Oh, it's like wow, that's a great one, Adam. Yeah. So, I, I well, like it's that. coming from a person who I think struggled with that. I had an insecurity around money. Yeah. I had that that desire to send that signal that I've made it, and it's like mm -hmm. look at me type of deal. And then there's things that's like, no, this is this is for me. Yeah, like I don't. Yeah. Speaking of that. things like that, uh, do you, you know, I'm glad we recorded the, I wish I, we should, I wish we could show the clip because remember when I first brought up the cyber truck? Listen now. Man, uh, how much yeah. shit South you guys Stradamus talked about? Yeah. Listen, yeah. 
it is doesn't shit you guys I want talk you to about know that. as we, cool we as talk I think shit about the design the ad is, yeah, yeah it doesn't you guys said it was going to suck I, it was going to tank I stand by that you it couldn't give tank. it to me you couldn't it's give it to me it's crushing if you gave it to me I'd give it to a family member that's no how, you wouldn't yes I would that's how much I feel about it if you gave me a if cyber, someone gave you a cyber I would truck? definitely give it to my yeah. mom or somebody who needs that bro yeah you I would keep another it? utility I would, vehicle. I, I already got that, a cool truck. Yeah, our bullet. And I already got something hella fast. So I got like awesome. I the things that you think are cool about it, I have really? in my opinion a better version of Damn, it. I've really? got a better four wheel drive vehicle. I got a better speed vehicle all day. So the things that you find cool about it, I don't need. And so if someone gave that you truck have to a me, bulletproof car? I I don't have a bulletproof <laughs> car. <laughs> no. And maybe I would consider Do you have a car just for that, that looks like it's a nineteen ninety video game? <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right then. No, I uh, love it, dude. Uh, I, I, I'm not a car person. You guys know this, but I'm little by little falling in love with that. It just it looks so different and weird. Have you seen one in person yet? No. Yeah. So let's. You know what I've that. heard about it in person? Whatever. This is the rumor it's I hear big. about it. I hear no, yeah, I hear big. it looks like a How fucking you... smudged refrigerator all the time. <laughs> oh, because of the stainless yeah, steel. Yeah, stainless steel. Yeah. So it looks. They make smudged. them in matte black. Yeah, I saw. Well, I'm curious to see somebody that. do a matte black. They, uh, yeah, I'm curious of like the parking those things like because it, it seems like they're wide. Does it have like a crazy turning radius on it? Big. Cra it's the only yeah, car. Like, it's the only production wide, car wise? that is not uh, that's uh, steer by wire. So the steering wheel is not, you're, it's steer by wire means that it's not directly connected. It's like computers analyzing how much you need to turn or whatever. So apparently it's got, first off, the turning radius on it's ridiculous. I thought it was business. bigger than like a conventional truck. Like it was a little bit bigger. Oh, is it? Yeah. It's it's pretty big. I just watched the video. So we saw the famous one, right? R race the 911 Turbo while pulling a 911 Turbo and it beat it. Such mm -hmm. a great ad. I just saw it race uh, Lamborghini Urus, which is a, 600 and something 50 or something horsepower yeah, the Audi, awesome uh, awesome it. yeah whatever your fine. car will smoke that by yeah. the way though, yeah. listen so you know. it fucking the, the Cybertruck smoked it like it was like in, like bad yeah. it wasn't like it beat it it was a kind of like where you smoke it so much that the guy driving the other cars in a drag race yeah toasted it how yeah. does it do on corners and everything like I don't they'll know. Never show that. They're not going to show it because yeah. it's a truck. And they'll never show it past a quarter mile because <laughs> yeah. give it a mile and there'll be a different story. It's like, a, it's That's obvious a problem. to me because it's, it's, it's yeah, it's electronic. Listen, it's cool. Dude. Ignition. It's, I mean, it's, it's a cool neat it's the same truck. Thing with and there's, a, and there's, and obviously there's going to be a bunch of people that like are going to jump down Justin and I's throat. I don't care. It's like, I think it I looks, want... still looks like a Dorito truck to me. So. A what? Yeah, <laughs> a bunch of Doritos like glued together. You could build it with a Dorito. Yeah, bro. Like, that's a good I will seriously make like a little chip dip with one of those things and just put a bunch of chips. So do you guys foresee, do you think it's going to be, because obviously there's a lot of hype around it, right? But do you think it's going to have staying power? It's going to be yes. like a crush. It's going to crush. Yeah, it'll crush. Yeah. It'll, it'll do. It'll, I mean, do it'll, listen, there's a bunch of dude, people that aren't. these cars have been You know who won't buy it? Nuts. Car enthusiasts. Real car people. Wait, hold on. Stop. Yeah. Stop. For, real people that have appreciation right now. for the what artistry of a car. What and like, real? Yeah. This, the, all the people that will like that are people that don't care, just like you. What? Like, oh. you're, <laughs> you are a perfect example of their buyer. There's a lot of you out there. What? Yes. There's a lot of people that, that wait, are- wait, When on. would you ever get a four-wheel drive pickup truck? Otherwise. No, I, listen. Every, pause. Let's, let's rewind for a second. Mm. Let's all calm down. Hold mm. on a second. You already admitted you're not a car hold, person. No, no, no. Stop. Stop it here. Did you not? First off, first off- it, uh, it's going to be, it's highly likely that over the next 20 years, you're not going to be able to get a car that operates on gas. True or not? Well, you be yes, a, the aftermarket, you mean? So yeah, like, it's yeah, not going to be. You can't beat them, join them? No, the that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> what are we talking about? Yeah. Everybody calm down. Okay. You're, you're not going to. Okay, one sentence, he's a rebellious guy. <laughs> like, know, right? fuck the man. We're going to, oh, blah, blah, blah. And then this one was like, oh, I'm going to go right with the crowd. Listen, <laughs> no, <shut up>. <laughs> <laughs> right where everybody else is away. going. When the, hey, you fuckers. When the zombie apocalypse <laughs> happens. Hey, you come out. You guys are going to jump in my cyber truck uh, to be safe. No, uh, listen, this is what I'm trying to say. Is What I'm trying to say is when you say real car enthusiasts, whatever. That people are always going to love old cars. There's always going to be that nostalgia. I yeah, totally get that. Yeah. But it's a car. It is a car. And that is going to be the real cars. The futures are all, they're all going to be electric. And trust me, I love the sound of an engine. That's the one drawback is it, I don't know how I'm going to feel about driving a car that go, that makes no sound. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I want to hear the, yeah, the revs. Yeah, there's a visceral, you know. Bro, like, half of the the awesomeness of these cars that we we would compare, like the old class, is the sound. It's yeah. not my my '68 Camaro would not beat some of these minivans today. You know what I'm saying? With the badass horsepower it's got, no. but it's the sound of the it's thing. All how it makes you feel? Yeah, how it feels driving it. Like, do you think just, people who rode horses were saying this? The car owners. 
You know what I mean? Like, what kind of noise you your no, car No, because it's a horse. I don't hear it. It doesn't yeah. sound like a horse. You know what I mean? <laughs> you think that that they had those same conversations? <sighs> yeah, I I think I the think jump from a horse to a car is yeah. radically different than the... That's like we'd be comparing if all of a sudden we went from cars to like spaceships. So like flying. Yeah, to yeah, flying. Yeah. It's, a, it's like a whole other class. Do you know it's what not, sold me, by the way? Can I tell you? This is how big of a nerd I am. So this whole time I'm kind of like, oh, this looks kind of cool. And by the way, I don't know if I'm getting one. So I, everybody thinks I'm, I don't, I'm just saying I like it. They have this like yeah, camper. Still, how much does it cost, by the way? Sorry. Yeah. I think you get the best, the top, top ones, like a hundred grand. Something yeah. like that. Okay. Yeah. The cyber beast. There's 60,000, 80,000 and a hundred grand. The one he's talking about is a hundred grand. Yeah. The yeah. Cyber, cyber beast. beast. Got all yeah. the, Cause the little baby one isn't going to be smoking. No, nine no, eleven. No, no. You got it. If I get a car, if I get that, then my, I'm going to, I want to dust. Justin and Adam all day long. So for, it has to be the fastest for a quarter one. Miles, for all the yeah, yeah, quarter yeah. miles at a time. And then he's going to charge for, for three Not hours. for a full drive, though, for 10 miles. <laughs> you, just hey, for a quarter mile for at a time. For a full drive. <laughs> you find me just a 10-mile Just for a quarter mile. He'll be like, okay, bro, okay. <laughs> we'll get us on I-5 and he's fucked. Get us on I-5 and we, you'll be up there for about 30 seconds. Hey, and then hey, be, we bump into each other, see whose car gets fucked up. We'll see what happens. We had so me in Arizona for a gymnastic uh event and they drove their tesla and they they literally had to charge it like six times oh yeah on the way to get there yeah. and, and it took them hours to charge yeah i'm not trying to drive far i was like distances. that's a pain in the ass Hell nobody yeah. talks about that yeah, yeah no no totally no what i was gonna say is what sold me hard this is such a nerdy thing but there's this like camper attachment have you seen this yeah where you attach it to the yeah. back and it turns into like a little like you could go camping and shit in that yeah yeah they've been doing i mean that. they've been doing that pickup trucks cool for things. a long time though i'm not knocking you he, <laughs> He definitely has like cool ideas and he's always trying to like upgrade. You better get one with all this fucking hype that you talk about. Right? I mean, you've been selling this thing forever. Either one, we better be getting some affiliate kickback right now <laughs> or you better own one. Bring Elon on talk, to sell us. Hey, you've been talking about all this and then, then you don't you know get how one. We know, you know how you know we don't have an affiliate thing? Because you just said real car owners wouldn't like <laughs> yeah. If there was an affiliate deal, you know you're asking me. <laughs> Whatever you know me, I still keep it real. I'd be like, yeah. well, you yeah. know, it's but cool it truck, awesome. but it's pretty shitty. I wouldn't want it. <laughs> We still sell it, bro. Come That's on. True, yeah. <laughs> you can't make you bullshit. That's 100%. Hey, speaking of sponsors, I got to tell you something. I ran into a fan the other day. This is rare now. Not the running into a fan part, but this right here. Usually, if I run into a, a listener, they'll say, oh, you know, I love the show and get like this positive feedback. It's really nice to hear. But this is what this person said to me. They stopped me and they said, oh, Sal, love the podcast. Listen. Eight Sleep is the best product I've ever used in my entire. I'm yeah. so glad you guys talked. And all he did was I want to talk about the sponsor. <laughs> oh, he, didn't talk, wow. he didn't talk about. He didn't talk about the podcast or anything. He said, "I said, how long have you been listening?" He says, "Like six months." So he's a new listener. He goes, "But I heard you guys talk about Eight Sleep. I got bad sleep. This and that. I bought it." And he goes, "Total and complete game changer." He goes, "After I forgot what he said. I think it was said like a couple weeks. It learned his." is body temperature. yeah I learned his body and he goes it's the weirdest thing never like, touched it again yeah. bro he's like I he goes I've been dealing with this for it's over 10 years at that point yeah. Yeah. he would not shut up Crazy. about body sleep I, well you, oh, what a great commercial to have while also having this talk about brands that are like luxury that, that's an example of that super, they, when super. I give the when people ask me because they uh, yeah. we used to talk all about Chili and Uller and stuff their yeah. products and stuff like that I said listen I got nothing bad to say about them but it's literally to me it's like comparing a Lexus to like a Bentley or Rolls Royce yeah. like they are literally the Bentley or Rolls Royce yeah. of all there's a ton of those products on the market and they're and so far the ones that I've experienced are pretty good like there's no, nothing bad to say about them but the quality uh, and what that eight sleep does is insane yeah. compared to the rest of them. And so, yeah, it is a little bit more expensive. than He literally was raving about it, like yeah. raving. He's like, you got to tell more people. I'm like, where were you? Know, we I haven't them. had, by the way, since we've started with them, which I don't know how long ago this has been, I haven't had to refill it up with water, which blows my mind because I used to have to do that all the time uh, with my Uller. Once I got it set on my temps, I've never adjusted or touched it It again, adjusts itself. Ever. It watches all your parameters. Yes. And it literally figures out, this is the crazy part. It figures out how to make you sleep better. Mm. You don't have to figure it out. It's yeah. not like you have to fool around with it yeah. to figure out what works best. Yeah. It learns because it monitors your sleep. It then tweaks itself and, and, and changes. And then here's what the crazy part. If your body changes... Uh, cause he was telling me about his wife and he goes, my wife loves it too, this and that. And so then we're talking and saying nothing else. And I left and I was thinking about this, said, you know, men don't necessarily go through this, but women do women. If you're listening, you know what I'm talking about? There's going to be times of the month during your, during your cycle, when you feel hot, 
There's times when you feel cold. There's times when sleep is, you're, you're really tired and groggy. There's times when you have, seem to have more energy. And this is because of the hormonal cycle. The eight sleep will pick up on your body's rhythms and will adjust itself so that it's always going to be perfect, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Brings you back to homeostasis. How wild is that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I it's, mean, they've really, they've really done it. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's such a dope product too that I don't even think about it anymore. Like one, it's set it and let it go. Like it, haven't had to refill Crazy. the water. How long has that been? It's been so long. Yeah, and it's only one, right? So, yeah. and dead silent. So the other one, which it didn't bother me because no, like white noise. Like it's white noise, yeah. and I like white noise anyways. I love the, I love when um, we say white noise. It's so funny. What? White noise, yeah. <laughs> mayonnaise, <laughs> yeah, <Quackers>. mayonnaise. Yeah. <laughs> but this is uh, s smaller. Leave it to Beaver. Yeah, le uh, smaller, less, uh, le no noise practically. And, My dad's a lawyer. And more horsepower as far as how fast it cools. Mm. It's like all of the above. It's, That's I mean, awesome. Yeah. It's oh, so we were talking about it earlier the Cybertruck Tesla. Uh, you know, uh, Elon Musk, whatever. Did you see who he just, so, okay. Elon has to have, I don't know the man. Okay. So I, I've, I've gotten messages from people. Stop dick writing. Whatever. Listen, <laughs> I don't know the man. I don't know if he's a good dad. Yeah, I don't know if he's a good I human. A tattoo of him right here. I just don't no know. Videos. Okay. But all I know is the stuff that he does. Okay? Just love his truck. This, no, this guy gets <laughs> on. <laughs> I also like his truck. <laughs> this guy has a ton of advertisers pull because of some literal political BS. Yeah. And we know this by the way, cause Instagram and Facebook just got, they're getting sued for allowing, uh, inappropriate material to get, uh, advertised and pushed towards children. But they of course pull from X and they, they're still on Instagram and Facebook or whatever. They pull from, from, uh, uh, from X. He gets on that interview and says, go fuck yourself twice really clearly. So he's got massive cojones, massive cojones. But then he does this. He puts a poll out. Should we let Alex Jones back on X? Yeah. And the fans said yes. And guess who's back on X? Alex Jones. Alex has Jones. Reemerged. Do you guys know the like like bro? Like I love it. He's he's kryptonite. Alex Jones is kryptonite. He's the first person the whole world to get like canceled agreed off to everything. snuff him out, too. It was like Yes. Like, and he put him back on, in cahoots. on X. Dude. What the poll? How what, was there the numbers? Oh, like? it was like 80%. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Was that, yeah. Wow. Was that hot? Yeah. Like a majority of people said, put him back now, on. Now, this was after the Tucker Carlson interview yes. or before? No, okay. Right around that, right around that same time. So, yeah. which by the way, did you guys listen to that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So Not I didn't know this. It, but I didn't know this about Alex Jones. Do you know how accurately he predicted September 11th? This is the haunting part. Yeah. This is the uh, one where I'm like, what? Do you know? Do you, okay. Uh, I don't. Okay. He, literally said there, you know, there, there's going to be another plant. There's going to be a terrorist attack plan, probably attacking the world trade center, flying planes in there. Mm -hmm. And they're going to blame it on Osama bin Laden. Yeah. And then I'm trying to make his voice because, yeah. and they're going to use this He's to go to CIA war asset. in the middle East. And it, that's, that's what he said. And is there like happened. years before documentation or, or, or mm -hmm. video of him? No, saying, they played yeah. the video, of him, video saying of him saying that like way before. Yeah. W way before. Way before. Wow. And then, and now, and I, and then Tucker, you see that before Doug? Yeah, I saw that. I think it was actually July of 2001 yes, when 2001. that he said that. We know the Joint Chiefs of Staff wanted to blow up airliners, Baltimore Sun, or if you let some terrorist group do it, like the World Trade Center, we know who to blame. And if there was an outside threat like a bin Laden who was a known CIA asset in the 80s, he's the boogeyman they need. So that was like two or three months before yeah. it actually happened. Now, Tucker Carlson says, he's like, you know, if I was the CIA or whatever, he goes, I would be investigating you right away because I'd be like, how the hell could you have known that? Unless. Yeah. Well, no, Alex Jones says, he goes, I'm just reading what the reports that they put out. They've already tried to attack the World yeah. Trade Center. They're already hyping up how they, we need to go to war in the Middle East. They're already hyping up how about Osama bin Laden. How many people know about these reports? That's true. Well. You know what I mean? In terms of the Pentagon and a lot of these like FBI reports, like these, they put them out for public uh, to to go through yeah. and read. Yep. And he's like, I feel like he's like the only one that actually reads them. Yep. Like like they say, like he's saying that by 2030, they're going to try and ban beef mm -hmm. worldwide. Yeah. They're going to try and ban meat. And you can, I mean, it makes sense if you actually see the, propaganda that's going on around you know right, right around yeah there. and i mean he's definitely an alarmist it's, it's hard to watch a lot of it without being like, okay okay i don't want to take all this in you know kind yeah. of a thing yeah uh when he but, talks about interdimensional like, <laughs> 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 well, that's, like weird well okay so the, oh what was the guy's name uh i just listened to that was on joe rogan but he was another like uh high up a uh, guy in the air force that actually actually you know his name right uh, andrew Gresh, Gresh, David Gresh. Um, but he actually has been 
investigating um, a lot of the uh, uh, UFO uh, information and stuff that they've done past with like ATEP and all that. Just not going to go into the whole thing. You got to go listen to it. But like there was one I didn't had no idea that they had actually like recovered, uh, allegedly recovered some craft in Italy uh, right before World War II. Mm. And wow. so, yeah. And like the, I guess the Pope and what he said back in the day, like the, uh, the Vatican, the Vatican. And then also like, I did hear you told me this. this. Yeah. I was telling you this this morning and the, and the mafia had a lot of the, um, information. So they gathered a lot of Intel and then they would actually supply that over to, you know, the U S this is all before CIA and all that was formed. So, uh, there, anyways, there's lots of interesting stuff. And again, it's all kind of coming out now. Why, you know, like there's, doesn't it feel question. like the projecting, like all the UFO stuff, doesn't it kind of feel like they're getting us ready for some big, well, I told you, I mean, when we first, reveal. you guys first started getting all excited, bring it up. I'm like, I'm more curious about what they're not telling us. Yeah. <laughs> like, I feel like this is all a distraction for something else that they don't want you to be paying attention. Well, to. You know, what sucks is how anticlimactic it is. You know, like, I know you know, it's like, we've been wanting like, Imagine like 10 years ago, like I was like, dude, Bigfoot, and you yeah. know, I got it'd be so awesome. And now it's just like, they're oh, yeah, like, like UFOs are real, like, there yeah. are you know, extraterrestrials, and but like, no, yeah, no. yeah, <laughs> you can say no forever, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't believe you anymore, yeah, I don't believe you, you know, a c crazy, uh, like corruption, conspiracy, whatever you want to call this conversation right now. Um, did you guys watch the story, the full story? Because I didn't know the full story of GameStop. Have you guys watched that yet? No. You have to go. No. You you all have to watch that so we can discuss it because I find it. And so I the story that I'm familiar with is you had a bunch of people on Reddit organized to drive the price of the stock up and use their collective efforts to to basically hurt all the hedge fund people who were shorting the stock. Yeah, you knew that's the, that's what I know. Yeah, but there's more obviously. Yeah, do you know how it all came to an end and everything too no oh that's why you guys gotta watch oh, okay. it because it's some crazy corruption with robin hood and the government and ever like allowing that to happen what happened basically oh, really? to save the banks right yeah. oh, so wow. how they intervene and regulated right yeah, yeah yeah it's so that's the part that's really just really fucked up and twisted about how it all went down um, super, super interesting though. Cause I, I knew kind of to the level that you did, like that's as much as I like, and I didn't even know. Well, of course you're, you're messing with, you got a bunch of people who really caused big players, billionaires to lose a lot of money. And that's, you're playing with fire. Yeah. But you're yeah. also, you're also messing with like 8 million people that decided to do that. This wasn't like a handful <laughs> of people that were making a run on it. It like, it, re it took 8 million people Damn. to move the needle. To collectively do this. Yeah. It's and so they've crazy. messed with all of them. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. So you have to, you have to watch wow. the documentary on it and how it all crazy. unfolds. And I guess I just wasn't really paying attention that closely to it. The, the irony of this actually is that I had a nephew who like middle of all of it going on was like, he, he's starting to save a little bit of money and he's always, he's always reaching out to me and like, Hey, what do you think I should do with this? Or should I save this? Should I invest this? I'm thinking about this stock. And he was like, I, I think I should buy game stock. I think I buy game stock. And I'm like, no, I'll stay away from all the hype on that right now. I was like, I would like, you could easily lose your money. And so I really pushed him not to, um, which I think was still the right decision based off of how everything yeah. eventually happened. Although there were some people that could have made a ton of money off of that, but well, they sold at the right time. Yeah, but I didn't realize uh, why they all did it. And now I get it because I watched the whole story. Like that, the reason why it worked was because literally like 8 million people banded held together it. and held. That's the only reason why it Until worked. Until everybody's calls came and went huh. and just get them to lose money. Huh. That's kind of a cool story. It's a it very cool. Yeah. It's actually, yeah, it's and, and so that's why you guys will enjoy it because, and this was all started by one, one dude, one dude yeah. on YouTube. And he was making videos from the very beginning and he rallied all these people. And it was kind of like the us versus them. And he wrote like log old, like it was a big, like the wow. way, think about that. One, yeah. one nerdy Sleepy cat one. guy rallied 8 million people to go after the fucking banks and he got them to, to stick together. Now what's together. up with him? Did he go to jail? No, but he had, he had a big congressional hearing and they, and they talked like, yeah, he ended up being okay. He, everything he did was legal. So he was okay. Yeah. Although they tried to again, can they, he counter sue? Is he going through that process? That's or? a good question. I haven't. How I don't old know. Is the guy is he a kid? He's younger than us, like thirties. Yeah, I think he's thirty. You imagine doing huh. some shit like that? And they're like, you got to come before Congress. Oh my god, oh, dude, the sweat, the anxiety that immediately would just go down. <laughs> the anxiety. Right, oh man, what? Yeah. Remember that video of uh? That's why I don't feel bad for uh, what's his name Zuckerberg when he was 
when he was in front of Congress. <laughs> he's trying to drink. Everybody water made fun of him, you know. And I'm like, bro, he's a kid, yeah. and he's talking to Congress, dude. Yeah. Like, who would it completely yeah, and he's, be and out he's, of mind? And he's not a normal kid either. He's a nerdy, quiet, introverted kid. Yeah, you dude. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, throw him on that stage. He's like, like, you know, he's like, I'm like, he did better than I would have done in front of Congress. Yeah, that would have yeah, maybe. Yeah. Just... Are you? Oh, there's a the kid. Right there's a the guy yeah. right there. Oh, oh wow. wow, a couple of things on him. So he's 37, and at the peak, he made over 48 million dollars on it. Wow. Whoa. Now, at the peak, he was worth it's 48 worth million. It. But he yeah. never sold. He never yeah, sold. and he basically extracted himself from all of the internet and isn't... I don't know if he... From what I could read, he's not to be found or people... So, are. yeah. So, what... So, the documentary talks about this. So, after all this got he's settled and he did... Bit. Nothing <laughs> happened. He completely disappeared from social media and everything. Wow. Like, just removed himself from uh, being on it all the time. That's wow. crazy. But the story is great. I mean, it's yeah. such an incredible story on... How it all started, and mm. and then what happened, and then the the shadiness of Robin Hood, and like like the billionaires that got involved in it, like it was super corrupt at that level, man. It's crazy. Yeah. I was going to ask you, Adam. You've been talking to uh, Drew Canoli um, a little bit lately. <coughs> I want. He's the founder of Organifi. For people who don't know, great guy, great guy. We love him. Um, what's he saying about? I predicted that their shilajit gummies were just going to crush, it's exploding. I, is that what he said? It's exploding. In fact, uh, you know, I'll ask him. I to, knew it because once they came out with it, I said, oh my God, th this was off air. I said, they, they taste good and it's Shilajit. It's got tons of studies behind it. Yeah. When, and it's going to it's gonna blow up. First of all, Shilajit, you're going to start seeing everywhere. I remember wellness people talking about that like years and years. I have already seen another competitor already jump on the bandwagon already. So like they led the way, I feel like, of, of getting it popular. And now you'll see. It's other. one of the most studied. Pro it's like ashwagandha has so many studies behind it, backing it. That's so interesting that it's co you compare it to something like ashwagandha, which is so popular. Yeah, that it hasn't. It didn't get that popular. People just aren't aware, and nobody. Right. And it, it's marketing, right? You got to market it, and then when people look at the data, and then you don't have enough people talking about it, and you just need one leader, right? One leader to come out. So he says it's crushing. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're just blowing up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's it's of it's, course it's doing really really well. It's one of my favorite products. I, mean, we, of theirs. It's a, I can't remember the last time we went through two bags of something. They don't last in here. Yeah, yeah. yeah they yeah, go. Yeah, we, well, we, all, we all eat them. That's everybody, the editors, everybody. I mean, I, there's. I actually love. By. I'm so I'm like I'm such a 12 year old, right? So I still take <laughs> a lot of gummy stuff. Like you know, like I have my I have some vitamin C gummies. <laughs> I have some like my antioxidants gummies. I have a bunch. Hey, of, when you get sick, do they give you the do they give you the antibiotics in the pink bottle? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like it's too good to be true. Like, how could this gummy be giving me the same as this this pill? Because the pill is awful that I got to yeah. take versus the the gummy and stuff. So, but I I actually think that's like a clever way to do stuff. I saw that our I know we can't talk about it yet. It's not it's the product's not done. But I know you're working with Ned, and they're looking at doing like a gummy type of yeah. product. And People like gummies, dude. Mm -hmm. I, do, I do. Yeah. I mean, and you're more likely to give Something me to, to finish it, it. Dude, <laughs> eat the whole thing. Speaking so. of gummies, when we were at the airport and. Uh, in Mexico on the way back. This is just something I do. It's not healthy, whatever, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but I just, for whatever reason, when I'm in the airport and I'm coming home, I buy gummy candy. Okay. That's yeah. what I do. Okay. okay? So right. if you ever see me in the airport, oh, look at Sal. I'm not judging Why are you, you eating bro. gummy bears? I just like the gummy candies and it's just, it's bad for my gut, not good for me, but whatever, but I do it anyway. I could not find in the airport in Mexico, I could not find gummy bears, gummy worm, nothing. Couldn't find any. But you know what they had? The weirdest, Gummy candy ever seen in my life. They were gummy like burgers. <laughs> <laughs> so they, I swear to ask Doug, I, I let Doug try one. It looks like gummy burgers. The, listen, it has a bun. Yeah. It has a green gummy thing, apparently the <laughs> lettuce. It's got a red gummy thing, which is apparently the tomato, a brown gummy Weird. thing, which is the meat, and then a bun. And they all came individually wrapped in a bag. And because I had lack of gummy options, mm. I bought them. And I like, I felt like I was a child. Like if somebody recognized me, I'm so like embarrassed. Yeah, so weird. But, but they candy. were gummy candies. They so were weird. I know. I know. Do you know what I've noticed with all the traveling we've been doing lately is there is a massive opportunity to make energy drinks and get them into some other places Thank in the you. world. Yes. Like, uh, I, I guess. Can we just call Rockstar or somebody else? Like, I guess just because are you? we've been conditioned for the Bay Area. Now, you guys do realize that America's productivity is connected directly to our energy. This is why we're crushing. Yeah. They, we have the energy drinks. <laughs> that what it is. They don't have them. I, no, like, okay. <laughs> I know so you're right. You go right over now, there. You, you can, get Red I Bull can, and that's I it, can right? walk out, out of our door. Red Bull's made it a lot of places. And within a two-mile radius, have access to 30 different energy drinks that Easy. exist. Easy. Easily. Easy. Right? Within a two-mile radius. And, and multiple locations, by the way. And that. you can get high doses of caffeine. Yeah. Okay. 
when we when we were in London, when we were in Mexico, uh, I don't remember if that happened in Florida too or not, but there's there is literally <laughs> no, no was, I'm not saying out of the country. I'm saying anywhere, oh, okay. anywhere outside of California. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, the Bay Area is what uh, I'm saying. Uh, uh, everywhere we've traveled lately, have, there is only uh, Monster and Red Bull. Yeah, there are your only two options. Yeah. Everywhere else you yeah. go, so weird. Yeah. Did, you, did anyone ever look up to see if there's any sort of regulations that are or that that are restrictions that they put on it? Like, why would it be so difficult, and why is it so competitive here but not anywhere else? Probably because the know. market's exploding. The and uh, that kind of market's exploding. It just takes longer in other in other places because the market started here. That energy drink kind of thing, you know. That I think you know what, what you know started. what the other one the the third one that I that we did see that I actually didn't even give them credit is Prime. So how smart do they look right now? Mm. Like being like partnering with a, a, a London based kid. Yeah. And, they're more and, international than yes. yeah, those other brands. Interesting. So, interesting. I mean, they're going to gobble up. That so, you know, let me make gap. it. Uh, so since you won't let me start a supplement company, can I make an energy drink or something, Adam? I would be open to that. What? Yeah. Only because I think I would consume enough ourselves to, <laughs> to carry <laughs> to, the product. To, to cover, the, <laughs> yeah. cover the margins. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hey, we're not losing. We're here in the inventory. Let me ask you guys a question. If you if we if if you let me do it with energy drink, what are my parameters? Can I make it dangerous, or do I have to keep it safe? I mean, and, you want to get amount people? of caffeine, that's for sure. Yeah, but can I have fun but with not, it and make it like, yeah. hey, this is gonna. Yeah, me, we want we want that to last. It taste good. We don't want to be two hundred or more milligrams of caffeine. Those okay. are my only two requirements. Okay, but can I get good, crazy though with it? Do whatever you want. Then after really, that. yeah, I don't care. Really, yeah, I'm not really worried about all the other stuff. All right, yeah, there's other things in my life I need to fix before my. Okay, all right, all right, we'll do that. We got we got the shout out. Didn't you say there was someone? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I want. Okay, so scroll down, Doug. So I remember the name of what it what it was. SB mowing. SB mowing. Okay. If you guys remember, uh, this was like at least a couple of years ago. I brought up a kid one time who, uh, do you guys remember this? He was a barber and then he had gone viral. He got millions of people. And like what he would do is like grab random people on the street and like give them a haircut. He'd yeah. find somebody with like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. got super famous from that. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And he, obviously he was talented, really right, good right, at what right. he did. So there's this guy online. I, I, he just came in my my thread, SB Mowing. He's got like 2 million or 3 million followers. And he does the same thing, but for people's lawns. So he walks down in these kind of ghetto neighborhoods oh, and random this. places and looks for people that have a, just a yard. Just that's a just, messed up yard. Yeah, the yard just consumed not, everything. Yes, and then he knocks just, on the door and offers his services for free. Wow. And then so like, this Mark, is for social media. Yes. Brilliant. So brilliant. <laughs> he does a great job, obviously. Yeah. But like, what a smart smart way to market yourself and he's exploded young kid um younger younger than us oh good you know yeah. everybody seems to be younger than us and what we talk about i don't know what it is about when we, maybe when you get to our age like it's hard for me to tell the difference between 25 and 45 you yeah. can be anywhere in that range you yeah. know what i'm saying yeah <laughs> so yeah. when people in their in their mid-30s say sir to me now i'm like yeah. oh god yeah damn it <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do Probiotics can do a lot for you. They can help with your gut health, reduce inflammation, help with your skin and energy levels, but they're not all the same. Look, there's a company called Seed that makes the best probiotic in the world. They have the world's leading scientists. They have a capsule that delivers the right strains to the right parts of your body. If you used probiotics in the past, nothing will compare to Seed. It's literally the best one you'll find anywhere Go check them out and get yourself a discount. Go to seed.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump and get that discount. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Mike from Massachusetts. Mike, what's up, man? How can we help you? What's happening, Mike? Thank you. Thank you guys so much for uh, for helping me out here and uh, taking time to answer my question. I appreciate you all and um, all the expertise that you do in the podcast. So thank you. You got it. What you got for us? Right on. So a little bit of background going to my question. My question overall deals with um, significant left-right differences in my hamstring. But a, a little bit of background before I get into that. Uh, back in 2009, I'd suffered a left ACL um, tear. And when I got surgery, they used a hamstring graft to make hmm. the new ACL. So they took a piece of my hamstring tendon yep. and they made it into the ACL. Um, and at the time, I was 19. I was a knucklehead and I wasn't quite as diligent with my PT as I should have been, right? <laughs> Um, so fast forward to today, I still, I have a significant difference in my left, right hamstring strength. Um, I've been strength training for the better part of five or six years on or off. Um, and 
on the day-to-day, -day, normal day activities, I don't notice a difference much. Um, in my bilateral lifts, such as squats and deadlifts, I don't really notice it, but I'm sure that it's manifesting in some way. Um, but in isolation work, that's when it really starts to come to head. And my biggest fear is that if I don't resolve this uh, eventually, it's going to lead to some significant left-right differences, compensations, chronic pain, all that. Um, so I've tried a predominantly a lot of isolation work, concentric, eccentric, high reps, low reps. Um, I, I guess my question is, is this something that you guys have seen in the past? Is it for me, is it a manner of just trusting the process, you know, making sure I'm hitting my protein intake, um, training hard, resting well, and eventually it will recover. It's just going to take a little bit longer. Um, or are there other things that I can be doing to help this process along? I'm, I'm curious about your, your expertise. Great question, Mike. So, uh, I've actually, I've actually got a lot of experience with this. I actually trained a vascular surgeon, uh, who had this procedure. Um, I trained an ex, a uh, basketball player, collegiate, who had this procedure. Uh, so this is where they take the, either the semitendinosus or the gracilis and essentially use that as an ACL. So this is one of those cases, unlike when we talk to other people with imbalances, okay, where you actually have a structural difference. <laughs> You're missing parts. Between, the, between one side to the other, okay? So that means that you, it'll never be identical, so that's the bad news. The good news is there's a lot you could do with your training to offset some of that. Like, so for myself, to use myself as an example, I have AC joint resection on my left side. My left shoulder will never be as stable as my right shoulder, but I got it like 95% of the way there uh, through exercise, which is not bad at all. In fact, most people have more of a discrepancy and they don't have that type of a, you know, they don't have an ACL resection like I, excuse me, a, a, a AC joint resection like I do. So a lot of your training should be unilateral when it comes to hip hinging and when it comes to direct hamstring work. That's it. That's the bottom line. So when you're going to do a deadlift workout, I would always start with a single leg version of a deadlift. And then the, then you can do your traditional bilateral but you should do unilateral work should make up half or a majority of the hamstring work because there's always going to be a difference. There's an actual literal structural difference. And that's how we train. Now, all the other rules will still apply. Diet still applies, training, recovery, sleep, like all the other rules and stuff that you hear us talk about on the show are going to apply. But you, you can't expect both of them to be identical because they're just not. Structurally, they're just not. I would, I would almost stay unilateral i mean unless you you have to go bilateral for the, the only this, reason why i would do some bilateral stuff is this well i mean you could squat bilateral but i mean deadlift like you, it, it, even deadlift and look what adam's saying is not wrong he could totally do that the only reason why i still did some bilateral work is because in the real world there's gonna you're gonna have to do things bilaterally and that's still a skill that you don't necessarily you still want to be able to have both sides communicate effectively bilateral, but it wouldn't be the majority of, of my workouts is, is all I'm saying. Does that make sense? Do you, totally. Do you have, and it, it is like uh, the unilateral before bilateral is just kind of prime that leg, get it ready. Um, and then you can utilize that in your bilateral lift. No, no. no. See, that's why, that's why it's just, it's not just, to prime it. It's because you're, it's, it's literally, that should be the foundation of strengthening. Yeah. The foundation okay. of strengthening should be unilateral. Bilateral is going to be more of a practice uh, type of thing. But but the majority of your workouts or half, when you yeah, get to hip bilateral hinging- Bilateral supplemental at this point. That's right. That's how you got to look at that. I mean, right. it, I mean, symmetry is written very well like this. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's a great ma map symmetry, you basically are running three of the phases, uh, unilateral work, and then you, the very last phase, you go bilateral. And, then go, and so I would do exactly that. I would live- most of the time in unilateral, almost always training that way. And then occasionally, you know, run a, a small phase for three to four weeks where you're going bilateral. So you don't lose that skill. And because yes, that applies to real world movements, but there's nothing wrong with, with, I mean, yeah. you can get really strong. You can well, really develop the legs by always training. unilateral. I think people like, yeah, definitely undervalue the fact that you can load substantially. Yes. Uh, unilateral type work. And, um, you know, I, and a lot of, uh, uh, 
world renowned world class coaches have, have taught this in fact and, and they don't even do bilateral squats or bilateral deadlifts. Yeah, you'd be fine. So, you know, like it, it's just a matter of like kind of gearing your mind into that direction and just just trying to see what you can do to just progress in that direction. Mike, yeah. do you have uh, map symmetry? I don't know. I've been kind of just figuring it out on my own and kind of making my own stuff. Oh yeah. yeah. Let us send that over to you. Are you a, like an, are, is, are, are you an athlete? Do you compete or you just stay fit for yourself? Yeah, he's got to be a coach. You put in a mission. Competitively. I'm, I'm looking to just be more mobile. I play um, adult league hockey and soccer, um, but oh. nothing competitive by any means. You're fine. Yeah. Yeah. I, do you, was there a reason why you chose uh, the graft versus the, you know, uh, what they typically will do with an ACL? Sorry, the bell just rang. Um, I, th that was just the guidance under my surgeon. And, you know, at the time I was 19, going into college, I didn't have any, like, D1 or professional aspirations yeah. by any means. So that's just what he recommended. Yeah, yeah. You know, lateral stability is going to be important for you as well. Um, hip thrusting is going to be a good exercise for you as well. There's a little bit of a loss in some of the stability in the uh, agonist stabilizers with, with this type. So, like, PCL... Stuff like that. So I would, I would, I would still do lateral work. As you know, what would be really good for you is sled work. Yeah. I've, I've been wanting Especially to. I primarily you. train out of the home, so I've got my uh, a squat rack, uh, barbells, and stuff. Okay. My basement doesn't quite allow for a sled, but I mean, I'm sure I can find a football field somewhere and pull something. Yeah, dude, once a week or even twice a month, sled work is gonna be really good for you. But yeah, that's pretty much it. You're not gonna get like you'll still build muscle. You're still gonna look good. You, 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 no one's gonna notice. Yeah. You probably won't even notice unless you like really push it or do some like really hard flexion exercise, like a heavy hamstring curl. That's what you probably notice the most. So, you know, it's, it's this is, I mean, like I said, it's not going to be identical no matter what you do, but I think if you do the unilateral stuff primarily, you'll, you'll be, you'll be better off for sure. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Cool. Great. All right. Thanks for calling in, man. Thank we'll you. send you my uh, symmetry. Oh, amazing. Thank you so much. Um, that's huge. I, thank you so much. You got it, man. All right. Take it easy, Mike. I think, what is the rate? I wonder what the, I forgot what my client told me, why they chose to do that over, you know, typically what they'll do with an ACL is like why that's, I think, is it because it's is uh, most likely? faster recovery for athletes or there's got to be a reason because people still do it. It's not like they don't, they don't do it anymore. I don't know. You know, um, it does provide a lot of stability mm -hmm. in, specifically for the ACL area. But then what happens is you lose uh, you lose some flexion strength because of the angle that you've changed the with those hamstring muscles. I would guess yeah. it's because it, it it is most like it, like of all the muscles, like it would probably looks the most well, like. What are they? Don't they use it cadaver ACLs now and yeah. stuff like that? Like yeah, but I don't know. That's a, I mean that's a good question. I'm yeah. sure Did you, you could, tear your ACL or was it or was it your? I had a partial tear tear oh, my okay, ACL, so, so just, they left my ACL alone. Yeah. It was my MCL that I blew out, so it was MCL and ACL, but the ACL was still. Yeah, intact. now I'm all intrigued. I'm gonna look it up and find out. Yeah, yeah. I thought he was like a coach or a trainer based yeah. off the question. Like, yeah, the way you asked I, I get why well, I've never seen anybody say inhibition. Like rarely ever do you hear that from somebody yeah. who's a normal mm -hmm. person who asks like that. Our next caller, Sean from Missouri. Sean, what's up, man? How can we help you? Hey guys, how's it going? Good. Good. What's happening? Hey, thanks a lot for, uh, for taking my question and for having me. I'm one of those guys that's been listening to you guys since, uh, 2016. So yeah. it's safe to say. I value quite a bit what you guys do for everybody. So thank you for that. Thank you, man. Um, oh, gee. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll just, I'll read right from the email. If that's all the same to you guys. Um, I'm 28. I'm five foot nine, about 165 on a good day. Um, and have been lifting consistently for half my life. Have a pretty decent grasp on my programming after making a ton of progress over the recent few years. Thanks to you guys. Um, but one burgeoning issue that has come into focus since I've been growing has been asymmetry in the chest. Um, as a hard gainer, the chest was one of the hardest parts to grow anyway, but now that I'm making progress, I'm noticing that my left, my non-dominant side is much, much fuller than my right. Um, I've seen the trend for a while and have been trying to focus on form for the most part. Um, and, you know, while strength training, it's been form. And then as the, uh, as, as the size has been put on, I've noticed that it's not really getting much better. Um, so I started to integrate unilateral lifts like flies, inclines, using dumbbells for stuff like that um, to make sure everything's even. And it hasn't gotten worse, but I don't see it getting any better either. Um, 
I kind of looked up upon further research. Um, I've read a lot about how the dominant arm may be stronger, which forces the non-dominant chest to help out more, or like the uh, the dominant side arm might kind of take a lot more of the work than than the chest, um, which forces the non-dominant side chest to kind of work more. And that might be why there's a little bit of asymmetry there. I'm not really sure. Um, so I guess my question is, is there truth to that? Um, and if so, is switching to unilateral for all chest exercises the solution? Um, or do I need to find another way to engage my dominant side pec? Do you, um, do you know, there, there's a, there's a more common thing that I, that I've seen in this situation. And that's like your, your more dominant side. So it's, so in your case, your right side, people, uh, that they, they played sports, they, 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 yeah, they have this. They're dominant and they're stronger, but they don't have better technique and form. And when it comes mm -hmm. to like bench pressing, okay, it's not just like lifting a weight up off your chest. Like you're trying to activate the chest muscles. And so what ends up happening is the less dominant side, people are, are stricter and better on their form. And they don't even think about their dominant side because the weight's easy to move on that side. And so they default to a, uh, a lesser uh, favorable recruitment pattern. Mm -hmm. So because their right side, they're so dominant because they were an athlete or whatever in that side, they press the weight up no problem there. And they're so focused on the weaker side, making sure the chest is up, the shoulder are retracted and having perfect right. form they actually get better chest recruitment and activity on the less dominant side this was actually a case that i, I had the same thing so mm -hmm. i had a, a very similar issue where i had my my chest was uneven and i was watching my less dominant side actually start to become more dominant and i think what that was was just the the focus on the technique on that side and what i had to do was just i went to unilateral work really lighten the load up and really got really technical on both sides. And for a while there, you're going to be just the dominant side. It'll be easy work. It'll yeah. be easy work on compared to until they catch up. And there's just subtle, um, subtle postural differences there as well. As you notice, like on your dominant side, you may be a little more, more protracted with your shoulder and you're getting that, that extra bit of extension there from the right side as your left is catching up and is more open and, and the chest has more time to really kind of help respond. And so to, to put more work back in setting yourself up uh, before the lift and getting those both shoulders to be open, retracted and really kind of supported there uh, to, to be able to, you know, provide that equal amount of force uh, that's going to contribute as well. Again, this is all like technique, like technique for mm -hmm. sure with that. But like the, um, the unilateral work is going to help kind of, you know, maintain the strength and kind of address any of the imbalances strength wise. But then, you know, setting yourself up and, and the mechanics of it is going to be crucial for you to like, make sure that's evenly distributed. Where, where do you feel? Where do you feel more? Why do, why do you say you're more dominant on the right? Is it from bench press? What exercise are you noticing this? Well, that are you physically can see well, the difference. Besides yeah, the it, it's more like, yeah, it's like athletically. So like I'm right handed basically is, yeah. is that's that's the way that I'm Do you notice it. a difference um, when so, you lift? When, like when you lift, is no, there a big difference? Yeah, no. So that's that's kind of why I'm a little bit more confused about it because I don't notice any strength differences. Like okay. I focus a lot on form. Even when I do uter unilateral stuff, I, I notice that it's kind of even. Um, it's just the shape and the fullness on this side is just, it's like an attachment point almost like this peck. I feel like it's right in the middle of the sternum. This one just kind of veers off a little bit. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't mm. bellow well, that's up, different. you yeah. know, that might be different. Um, I, so without seeing a picture of your chest, it's hard for me to determine, but did, did you, mm -hmm. did you send us a picture by any chance? I, I didn't know. Okay. I, and I've got tattoos all across the chest. It's kind of hard to see in a picture anyway. I can, okay. I could definitely send one in after. Yeah. But. Because you, if it's an attachment thing then there's nothing mm -hmm. you can do about it. Uh, so if you okay. have, yeah, if it attaches uh, further off to this, off the sternum than the other side, there's nothing you can do about that. Mm -hmm. uh, that That's just a muscle Genetics. attachment. Yeah. That's just your genetic. Okay. Just, if so there's you, no difference in strength. I, I'm telling you though, you're describing exactly what, what I went through. Mm. It looked like I had like a different shaped chest it, on, yeah. on one side versus the other. And it was just, and I could tell that it was underdeveloped. And if it would just develop, if it was developed more then it would look more like the opposite side. And it's for the exact reasons that I'm telling you is that I was so focused on the, the, my weaker side that the technique and form was really good on that side. And my dominant side, I was less focused on the technique because I had no problem. The form, the weight was easy to move, 
But what I wasn't realizing was the tricep and the shoulder were taking over more of that movement to perform it. Whereas in my weaker side, I had to be so perfect on form that it was the chest was doing most of the work like it should be. And then when I would go into things like bench press, the bar would move evenly and you wouldn't, my form would look good from the, uh, for the uh, average person. But what's happening is my recruitment pattern on the, on the stronger side is shoulder and tricep more. And on the weaker side, it's all chest because of my technique of practicing that. Yeah. And the way I caught it up was all unilateral work, starting with the, the less dominant side first yep. and just being very strict with form and recognizing that the side that's stronger you're, you're going to have to just lay back for a while because you know you can do way more weight, but it's not about way more weight. It's about the technique of moving the weight that, that, ma that matters the most. Yeah. Do you have map symmetry? I don't know. I guess that was going to be my next question. I'm in phase one of anabolic again right now. And as you guys know, the, the strength gains are pretty real in that, in that couple weeks span there. So my question was going to be, if you did point me toward more unilateral training, do I just kind of back off the strength and kind of just focus on, you know, not, not looking at the, I mean, those numbers pop if, up or is it something that can kind of work hand in hand? No, I mean, if you're having fun, you can finish phase one and then I'd go into map symmetry at the end of map symmetry. There's a strength phase that I think you'll really like. So finish up okay. phase one. Cause you're, it sounds like you'd have getting some great gains. I wouldn't want to stop that. And then after yeah. phase one, switch right into map symmetry. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. All right, man. Thanks for calling cool. in, dude. Thanks a lot. You got hey, it, brother. Appreciate it, guys. You got it. Thanks. If it's a literal attachment issue, though, there's nothing you can do about it. But I think it's, you're, it's probably what you're saying. Right? Yeah, I mean, you're right. You know, it's, it's not common to have a radically different attachment uh, right to left, yeah. unless yeah. you had an injury, right? You'd unless see you tore that, something, though, right? Yeah, before you really put the work. I mean, you see could, you could even You'd like see it. like this is what that's why this is so close to home for me. Is like it, I thought all those things. I was yeah. like, man, why is my chest not attached to the center like the other one? It was just it wasn't full enough. To fill in the yeah, gap on yeah. that side. It was too, and, you couldn't even see that it was an attachment. Yeah. Oh, okay. and, and so it was just, it was way more, and it was on the opposite side, I you see. would think. And it was for all the reasons I said. So I think it's, I wish I still had a, I don't know if I have a picture somewhere of me like that, but that was a major issue for me was I, I could not figure that out for the longest time being like, I don't understand why my, my weaker side has a, a, a more developed looking chest. Mm -hmm. And that was it. Our next caller is Amber from California. Amber, how you doing? Hi. Good hey to guys, see you. What's up? Hi, Amber. Not a lot. Just answering questions. How can we help you? Oh, well, I'm so excited to be here and to have my question answered, hopefully. Um, so I have been basically training for about a year and a half with a focus on strength. And sorry, my daughter's right here. So if I keep looking over. That's all right. <laughs> Don't let her get me. So, That's <laughs> uh, so in September, I have noticed these like horizontal dents that developed in my quad muscles on the front of them, obviously. And I don't really know what they're from exactly. I'm worried that it's bad form. I read that it could be from leaning on a counter or a table. So my questions are, A, what do you think most likely caused these horizontal dents? And B, how should I train moving forward to minimize these dents and hopefully reverse them. Do they hurt or bother you? Or do you notice anything when you work out or do you just visually see them? Visually it's, there's no pain. It's all aesthetically very displeasing. <laughs> uh -huh. And then when you press, if you press your hand above the dent, uh, you have, you said you have a daughter. Yeah, I have two kids actually. Two kids. Did you notice a lot of water retention when you were pregnant? You know, when you, you test it and you put your hand on it and like it leaves an, like an indentation, you take your hand off and then it's you still know there. I don't know, but I was wondering if maybe there was something going on with like hormones and body fat, you know, cause it's like above the dents, it seems to be like puffier. Yeah. So like on yeah. the upper thigh and yeah. You know, that whole area. There's there's an edema thing going on. Mm -hmm. I would I would go to the doctor and I would have them check your if you're having any lymphatic issues mm -hmm. or okay. any anything in that nature. This this is a water Some this drainage. seems to be a water retention or swelling issue. Uh, it's not, ah. it's not muscle unless you have some mm -hmm. muscle, some damaged muscle there, but you would have known like you would have gotten a car accident or somebody kicked you or something yeah, or like that. Yeah, bother her physically. Yeah. So uh, it looks uh, like there's some kind of swelling coming probably from 
uh, the pelvis area or above. And then what happens is it starts to settle. Yeah, it's trapped. And it comes down. Yeah, and it goes down the body. Um, and it, it it's kind of staying around there. And so then the dent really is where there's no swelling or less swelling. It's what it okay. looks like to me. But I would definitely have a doctor look at it because this could be not a big deal. Could also be a very big deal if there's some kind of a drainage issue or some kind of a blockage, uh, especially a blood clot or something like that. Do you have any tingling or any different, like any strength, weakness, any weaknesses, anything like that in the lower body? No, actually, I feel fine and I feel strong and I feel healthy. It's just kind of like the look of it is just a little weird. Okay. And then it's always like this, right? It's not like when you're sitting and something's on your leg and you take it off. It's just no matter what, it's always there. Um, yeah, I did stop working out for about two weeks and I've been very cautious about the table at work and it seems to not be as deep as it was, mm. but it's still like, I can run my hand across and it's like, you know, yeah, it looks like a water. It looks like a water. Yeah. Yeah, have you noticed if you, yeah, like carbohydrates or sodium, like you've consumed, like if it, does it affect like the size or anything? No, no, it hasn't like gotten worse. Okay. So you ever see like, uh, you know, like sometimes you'll have like, um, like a guy will wear like long, like he got dress socks on the real long. He goes on a, on a trip, comes back from uh, business, yeah, get those lines. takes his socks off. And then it's like, he's got like, it's like swelling above it. And then all of a sudden you can tell where the socks were. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it could be something like that. There's some water retention going on. Maybe you're leaning up against a desk. You come off. It takes a while for it to go away. I would still get checked out though. To make sure that there's nothing wrong with the your 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 the way your body is moving fluid uh, throughout itself, just to make sure, just to rule out anything else. Okay. Okay, but it's not All your right, workout. Yeah. It's not your workout. There's nothing. There's nothing you do with your workout that's causing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank goodness. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, hopefully it's nothing bad. Obviously, but I was worried that I messed it up yeah. on my own, like from no. that form. No. 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 Nope. No, nope, nothing, nothing you did with workouts. Like Go so. have it checked out and then circle back. Cause I'd like Please. to hear, I'd like to hear what they yeah. say. Yeah. What program are you following by the way, Amber? Actually, I'm not following any program. I'm just well, that's why doing you it on my own. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you got the dance. You're not following a program. <laughs> that's right. I'm going to send you a program. I know that yeah. I'm going to send you a I'm program. Sorry? I'm going to send you one of our programs. Okay. Do you go to a gym or do you work out at home? So I do have a gym in the apartment building that I go to and it's a dumbbell kettlebell cable machine, very small, but efficient. And that's, I just go there and I just do it, you know? Okay. I'm going to send you maps anabolic, follow the dumbbell only version. I want you, that's that, that probably would be a good program for you. Okay. Okay. Perfect. That's awesome. And then I'll definitely go to the doctor because I mean, yeah, if I got to do that, I'll go do that and make sure everything's fine. Just, <laughs> yeah. Just yes. check it out. Yeah. And then let, okay. it, to check yeah. it off. Then let us know. All right. Yeah. All right. Perfect. I definitely will. And, uh, you know, just thank you for taking the time to help me with this, you know, issue and, uh, definitely appreciate the show and everything you do for us and sharing all the wonderful information yeah, and not selling us any baloney we don't need. Oh, so, thank you it. so much. Appreciate the call. Thank you. Amber. Thank thank you, Amber. You. Bye guys. Take it easy. Bye. Well, that water. I, yeah. I had a thought through this. Like if, if that was me, like I would get one of those, like, like cupcake, you know, pans and just drop. What? what? No, I got instant abs. <laughs> stupid, <laughs> stupid. Like that, that, that meme of the Just guy saying. in the fence. You know, you the, could use, use it. For use good. water retention yeah. to your benefit. Use it for Edge your in advantage. the cuts that you want. No, it's no. most likely that there's yeah. no, I mean, she doesn't hurt. doesn't bother her. Well, look, so. and, and the reason why I told her the doctor is you could have, it could be like a circulation. You could have a issue. minor, infl infl you can have a minor infection in an upper part of your body. It tends to, the, the fluid tends to travel down. And then you'll see it kind of stop at a particular point and yeah. you'll notice this like, it seems like that's probably what's going yeah, on. this weird thing, or there's some kind of water retention issue and she is leaning up against a desk all day long. And then when she comes off, it sticks around for the rest of the day and she's noticing she's hyper yeah. aware of it. But nonetheless, you know, when you probably have nothing crazy, if you have weird, alarming, like excessive swelling or un, um, what's the word I want to use? Ununiform swelling. That's almost always a reason to go to the doctor because it probably isn't, uh, like something bad, but it could be. So that's one be. of the things you want to get checked out. Our next caller is Gabby from South Carolina. Gabby, what's happening? How you doing? Hi, guys. I briefly met y'all when I went to the Olympia for like eight seconds, but I was kind of um, starstruck. So <laughs> <but> anyway, <laughs> yeah. my question for you cool. guys, I have been um, lifting for the past four years. Um, 
I started doing it well about three years ago. Um, I'm now at the point where I want to change my training focus. For a while, I've been focusing on strength and building muscle. I went through a couple of different bulks and a couple of different cuts until I decided I had a, the amount of muscle that I was happy with. And before I started lifting, I was really into running. And I know that obviously you can't build muscle while you're running. They're opposing adaptations. But um, now that I've built a physique that I like, I have an amount of muscle mass that I do like, but I want to phase towards running again. And I want to train for a half marathon, maybe a marathon. Um, obviously, I am, I'm not trying to build muscle while I'm doing this, but I would like to try and keep as much as I can. Um, I know I can't overtrain. I can't lift a ton while I while my mileage increases, but I want to be able to still have a pretty strong metabolism. I don't want to have a ton of downregulation. So I'm just trying to see how I can best preserve the muscle mass that I already have and to make sure that my metabolism doesn't downregulate too much. I'm just for background, I guess I'm 23 next week. I am 118 pounds, I'm 5'5", and my body fat percentage is probably around 19%, and I eat like 2,100 calories while running nine miles a week and lifting three times a week. What's the goal with the with the half marathon or marathon? Yeah, that, that's do you, it. Do you want to, are, you, are you trying to win them or just to be I able to complete them? I want to complete them. I want to complete them well, but I'm not trying to necessarily beat all okay. these other people. I just oh. want to beat myself. Lift one day a week. It's, no, this, look, this is easy. You don't need to train crazy uh, for a half. You're already running nine miles a week. Do you feel like you could just go right now? Do you feel like you could go run a half marathon and be okay? No. Um, I feel like <laughs> I can run maybe 10 miles or uh, not. You're close. Maybe, maybe eight. Yeah, I'm close, but. Sorry. So look, here's the deal. Um, for the half marathon, uh, honestly, you probably don't need to run more than twice a week. Um, mm -hmm. I would do a fast five mile run and a slower 10 mile run. I would not run 13 miles until the day of the marathon lift two days mm -hmm. a week, bump your calories a little bit and, and you'll, you'll be okay. When you get to marathon, drop your strength training down to once a week at another day of running where you're going to go five miles fast, 10 miles slower, and then you're going to do one 15, 13 to 15 mile run, but don't run a full marathon to get the day of marathon marathon. Now that, that should get, that should get you there without overtraining, without overdoing it and, and feeling, you know, pretty, pretty darn good. But I would bump your calories in the process, keep your protein intake high, get good sleep. Yeah. Um, and you'll be okay where, where, where you'll, where you're going to mess up is by running more than that. By just doing lots of mm -hmm. people, lots and lots of running. They think that if they got to get ready for a marathon, that means got to run every single and, day. And or also doing a bunch more training or yeah. doing keeping your training. I, I think yeah. you could go down to two days a week if she's training for the half marathon and then go down to one day a week if she's going to go for the full marathon. Yeah, exactly. But uh, every, everything else, I 100% agree exactly like that. Yeah, you'll be totally fine. Okay. Well, thank you guys. I just don't want to lose, I guess, what I worked really hard for in building up my metabolism. And you, you won't. Over Overtraining is the only way you Look, can yeah, do that. You won't. You won't. And whatever you do will come right back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like you're, right away. You're going to get, you're going to, here's what you'll notice. You'll get more endurance. You're going to lose some strength. You might lose some muscle fullness. Body fat percentage might go up a little bit uh, at, at most if it does. That's about it. And then when you're out of it, you know, take a little time off, get back to lifting, you'll bounce back really mm -hmm. quick. If you overdo it in your training, that's yeah. where you're going to screw yourself up. Yep. And honestly, there's a lot of Just great, keep feeding a lot of value in moving in and out of stuff like this. It's the people that get stuck in it that it's not healthy and ideal. But that's for right. you to have strength trained, built your metabolism up, done a great job, what you've done so far, to interrupt that with a nice half marathon, the marathon run, and then go back to your yeah. training is completely you healthy. the endurance benefits going back yeah. into the strength training. It's going to be great for yeah. you. Yeah. And yeah, look, she's got a great physique. We're looking at your Instagram right now. Yeah, you do got great muscle. I think you'll be okay. <laughs> I think you'll be okay. okay. It's, you're, you're not going to lose as much as you think. If you start to feel, here's the deal. If you start to feel like garbage, if you start mm -hmm. to have poor sleep, if you start to just feel weathered and beat up, don't get caught up in the like, I got to do this at all costs type of crap because that's where people start to run into problems. But if you feel good, while you're doing it, you feel kind of good. Don't say to yourself, Ooh, I feel good. I could do more. Like just feel good. Just keep yourself in that feel good state and you'll be okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it a lot. You All got right. it. Thanks All for right. calling in. All right. Bye. You know, I'll tell you what. I feel like we met, we met her boyfriend or husband too. We, both of them. 
Yeah, so he looks really familiar. Yeah, I think so. So, you know, here, okay. So if people think that overtraining is common in the gym and the strength training space, multiply times 100 in the running space. Oh, yeah, yeah the running is, yeah. I have nuts. never, never, ever met anybody who trains for, who trained for a marathon or half marathon who didn't just overtrain. Reasonably. Yeah. No, nobody does. Yeah. They think that they need Very to run few. at, you know, they need to get close to what the race is once a week. And then the other times run like crazy miles. It yeah. doesn't no, not at all. I mean, I had one woman, we got her ready for Boston to qualify for Boston and then for the Boston. So, you know, and she never ran a full yeah. marathon. Well, especially if you're competing for the competition, That's it. especially if the suggestion, the mile suggestion you gave you're uh, over time, you're incrementally improving that. That's right. Yeah. You're just getting a little bit better at the That's 10 what you minute. want to you're see a little bit better at the five minute. You're getting a little bit better at the 15 minute mile or the 15 mile. Yes. Like each time you're getting a little bit better at it. You keep progressing like that. Then the day of the actual half marathon or marathon. Yeah, that's when be, you push yourself. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. Look, if you like the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com. Check out our free stuff. Also, if you're a trainer or coach, I'm going to be teaching three classes for free for trainers and coaches starting January 15th. Go sign up now, mindpumptrainer.com. One more thing. Find us on Instagram. Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpdestefano. And Adam is at mindpumpadam.